Hey, welcome to another video tutorial for Android applications. In this program, we're going to create an application that will do a spin the bottle game. So you'll click the spin button on your phone, and the uh, computer will tell you if the person to the left or to the right has been chosen. And so it's a random number that de determines how many degrees that the bottle spins. In this program, we're going to see some new things on animating pictures, obviously. We're going to look at random numbers. And also, you notice the animation stops before the actual toast message appears. And so there's a few new things that we'll look at here in this application. So let's get started in our application. We'll start a new project, and I'll call this thing Spin the Bottle. So once your message at the bottom says it's finished, we're going to go to the main activity XML file and we're going to build our interface. So let's delete the Hello World app. Let's put in just two things here. We're going to put in an image view in the center near the top. And in that image view, we're point we'll put a picture. And then in the button below, we will have the spin button. So let's add a comment to there. Let's double click here. Let's give this button an ID of spin, B underscore spin. Next, we need to put a picture into our image view. So on the internet, I'm going to search for a bottle, ping, PNG. Let's do the image search. I'm going to choose a non-commercial reuse. And let's pick some of these first ones here. I'm going to pick the Coca-Cola. Notice it has a transparent background, so I will click View Image. Now I'm going to edit this into our Pixlr program, pixlr.com. We need to make this picture fit into the app, so it's much too big right now. Let's copy the URL, go back to our photo editor, launch the web app create a new image from the URL. Paste in our Coca-Cola. Let's first of all change the image size. So I go to image, image size. The number of pixels in this application only needs to be about 150 wide by 200 tall. And click OK. Let's save it. Let's keep it as ping transparent. And I will save it into my downloads as bottle. So now back into our application, we need to go into the resource file. And in the drawable area, we're going to put the bottle. So I go to my finder or my file downloads area. Find the bottle, right click it, copy back to my program, paste, and choose OK. So now the bottle is part of the resources of my program. Let's go into the image view item, double click it. I'm going to give it a ID of IV for image view underscore bottle. For the source, I will click the three dots, and I will search in the drawable area for a bottle. Okay, so the interface is ready to go. Now let's go on to the programming. The first steps in the programming is to import some of the IDs. So we have two IDs. So we're ready for action now, so we're going to go to our button and we'll choose We'll choose the Set on Click Listener option. We've done this before. I'll create a new on click listener. And we have an on click button now and the function that goes with it. So let's create some space. We'll put some code in here. The first thing we're going to do is let's create an, a random number. So I'm going to have an integer and we'll call it uh, the spin degrees. We're also going to have a random object. 
So let's have a random, and we'll call him um, R. And he is going to be the uh, a new random object. So now let's assign a value to the spin degrees. So the spin degrees is going to be equal to R dot next integer. So we're going to get a random number using our random number object thing. And uh, how, how much how much spin do we want our bottle to do? Well, you might say 360 would be a good number to choose from because that will give us a random number, any in the angles that are possible in our bottle. However, we'd like to actually spin the bottle multiple times. So let's let's multiply that by 10. So we could go up to 3,600 degrees in spin, so 10 times around. So we'll just uh, make it a little more exaggerated. Okay, so now I'm going to introduce a new object. It's called a rotation animation. And so this is some predefined things that we've got in our Android libraries. I'll give it a name, rotate bottle. And uh, it's a new object, so we'll say this is a new rotate animation thing. Now there's a whole bunch of options to fill in here, so we need to go look in some of the documentation to figure out how this works. I'm on the uh, website developerandroid.com. So reading documentation becomes necessary when you want to create something new and you don't know anything about how it works. And so mm, documentation is there because you don't have to memorize everything in Android. You just go find the answers here. So here is the object constructors, they're called. There's four different ways that you can build a rotation animation. We're going to use the last one. And you'll, you'll see here that it tell, tells us what we need for our parameters to make a new object that can rotate. We need something that is a from degrees and two degrees. Well, we can do with that right away. So I'll come back into here. So my from degrees is going to be zero, and my two degrees is going to be the spin degrees. So that's the easy part. So how far are we going to spin? Somewhere from zero to this random number. The other types are a little more difficult. It says we have a pivot type and a pivot value. Let's go see what that might say. So I'm going to go down the page until we come to some options here. Pivot type. So the types that we can do are absolute types, relative to self, and relative to parent. Well, the one we want is this relative to self because it's like a, a spin. Relative to parent would be like an orbit around an object, and absolute um, would be more like uh, something according to the uh, edge of the screen. So let's go with the relative to self. Animation dot relative to self looks like a predefined thing. So let's go type that in here. So we've got ourselves uh, animation dot Oh, look at there, it completed it for me, relative to self. Uh, we're going to have a pivot value. The next thing is the x coordinate about which the thing is being rotated. Basically, this says, where do you want the uh, origin of your image? Zero is the left edge, and one or 100% is the right edge. So we want something that's going to spin right on the center of the bottle. And it is a float value, so let's go back to our command here and we're going to type in 0.5, 0 0.5 and it's a float value so I type in the letter F to let the computer know that that is a half uh, 0.5. Let's make some room here. Now the other coordinates in our in our um, in our definition here are the same except we're using the Y value so the same relative to self and 50% so I'm going to just copy this line here and say the last two parameters are going to be identical. There's some other options here. So let's go and add a new item like a rotate bottle dot and uh, we can say this these options show up like set duration. So how long do you want this spin to last? Let's pick a number. Let's say it's going to last for um, two seconds. So let's put in a 2000. There's one more option. I'm looking for set fill after and set that to true. So you're saying, where do I get this thing from? Set fill after. Now let's go back to the documentation again. We're on the animation page and I'm going to search for this set fill after attribute. It says here, this is a option that will let you show the uh, animation 
and it will persist when it is finished. So in other words, the bottle is going to stay where we put it. So I wouldn't expect you to be able to find this unless you had a tutorial on how animations work, but this this uh, flag here, this true, will let our bottle sit on the table after it's been spun. So we need set fill true. Okay, now here's another line we're going to look for. Rotate bottle, set interpolator. What in the world is that? Well, let's just go pick, take a peek and look at our animation screen again. And uh, this here is an acceleration or deceleration. So basically it's going to start slow, spin fast, and slow down. So it's a, it's a, smoother, a, way, a smooth way to look at your animation. Okay, so now we've set up all these variables on our rotation. Let's go into our object, our IV bottle, and we'll type in dot start animation. Okay, so there is a start animation command. And what is the animation? Well, the animation is what we just created here, this rotate bottle object. So I'll pop, copy and paste that into there, and it should be ready to go. Okay, looks like when I'm spinning the bottle, it's doing exactly what I asked it to do. It picks a random number between 1 and 3,600, spins the bottle that number of degrees, and then stops. And so all the components of my animation seem to be set properly. Now the last part is we're going to add a message at the bottom that says, when the spin is done, it'll tell you if the person to the right or to the left has been chosen. And so we'll do that next. Okay, so now let's see what we can do to figure out who is chosen. So we're going to need an if statement. So you might ask this, if the spin degrees um, are greater than like 180, then we would say the person to the right has been chosen. No, that would be the left has been chosen. And so then obviously the other way would be the person to the right. So I would say else and uh, the right has been chosen. So that would be from 0 to 180. However, this here isn't going to quite work because our spin degrees go from 0 to 3,600. So we need to figure out if there's a way we could come up with a 0 to 360. There are several ways we could do that. We could divide this by a thousand, and that'll give us something accurate. Or we could use what's called the modulus operator. It's like division. It uses the percent sign, and uh, it will divide this integer by this 360. And this percent sign, the modulo, will give us the remainder. And so now we have ourselves a remainder from somewhere between... 3,600 and 0, and we're dividing by this, so we should get a, a number between 0 and 360. So let's put a message on the screen to say which one has been chosen. I'm going to create a toast and choose create a new toast here. And I'm going to say uh, the left has been chosen. And I'm going to also put in a plus and show what the spin degrees is modulo 360. I want to see what that number is. Let's uh, put that on the screen. I'm going to also copy this and put it for the right and put in the word right. Let's see if it works. Okay, so now when we run the app, it says left has been chosen. And it shows me left again. This time it shows right, 114 degrees. So it appears like it knows that if you're from 0 to 180, it chooses the right side. And if it's from 180 to 360, it chooses the left. Now there's one problem with this. The answer is given away for us at the bottom of the screen before the animation starts. So that actually ruins the whole anticipation and the mystery of how the bottle is going to be chosen. So we're going to add one more thing and fix up these messages. Okay, back in the code, I'm no longer going to show the number of degrees here. I'm just going to say the person to the left has been chosen. Okay, so now I have the full message, the person to the left or the person to the right. Now I want to delay this. I want to have a delay statement so that way it doesn't show the, the toast message until after the spin is completed. So I'm going to add something called a, another uh, listener here. So we've, we're familiar with button listeners. Now I'm going to add something called an animation listener. So we'll start with the rotation bottle variable. 
And then we're going to add a dot and do set animation listener. Press the tab key and inside of the parentheses we'll create a new animation listener object. And so as soon as you choose that you get three different options. There can be an action for each of these. So when the animation starts or when it ends or when it actually repeats itself. So the only one we're interested in is the center one for when the animation stops. So let's take the if and else statement and cut it out and that is the code that we want to put in the center where it says animation end. And so then the end will be a result where it shows the message. Okay, we have an error on spin degrees. It says that this should be accessible from an other, another class. We have to declare it final at the initial point where it was declared. So final int. Now let's run it and let's see what kind of a result we get for our animation. Okay, it looks like we're ready to go. Now this time the difference is when we click the spin button, the animation stops before the toast message appears. So the anticipation builds as the bottle spins. Okay, now let's talk about your challenge in your homework. So in this design, I would like you to have four people in the table instead of just two. So we'll talk about the northwest, southwest, northeast, and southeast quadrants. And so the message will be uh, customized for those four people. So where are we going to do that message? It's in here in this section called On Animation End. Right now we're only looking at 180 degree differences, so I'm going to have this into four quadrants instead. So the first person will be 0 to 90 degrees, and they will be the northeast quadrant. Then we'll have the southeast, and then we'll have the southwest and the northwest. And so modify this uh, statement here so that we get four different messages, and we can tell each person which is pointed to the bottle. 